In its first 46 years, CSDB was impacted by many influential people and events. Similarly, CSDB's contributions had a nationwide reach. These historical photographs highlight its rich history, bringing us to the 1920s, a time of growth. Photograph titles, Jonathan Kennedy, General Palmer, Old Maine, School for the Blind, 1883, Paul Hubbard, Lon Chaney Sr., Nikola Tesla, Bessie and George Vedits, Armistice Day. Historical map of Colorado Springs transitions to CSDB logo. Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, Excellence and Service, established 1874. Title, CSDB through the years, 1921 to 1970. Aerial view of campus pans east to west. Old-fashioned script writing scrolling through names and dates. Beginning in 1921, our much-beloved superintendent William Margo passed away, and his wife Belle became superintendent. She served for one year until her death. Then Thomas McElhoney became superintendent. Simple graphic of CSDB campus depicting building positions with rotating photographs of each. During his 10 years of leadership at CSDB, he added four new buildings. 1922, the Hubert Work Gymnasium. 1923, Argo Hall, the cafeteria. 1928, Ritter Hall. And 1931, West Hall dormitories. In 1932, Alfred Brown became the superintendent and led the school for 22 years. Many well-known students graduated during his tenure. Man Communicating in Sign Language, titled Don Osbaugh, Class of 1979. Mervyn, he went by Merv, Garretson. Photograph of Merv, titled Mervyn D. Garretson. This is his sign name. Was born in Wyoming in 1923. He got spinal meningitis at the age of five. He came to CSDB in 1931 at the age of eight. Mervis circled on a photograph titled Our 1941 Football Team. And in high school he played football and basketball. And in 1941, the football team won a national championship with Merv as a lineman. He graduated in 1941. He was the valedictorian of his class. There were so many wonderful accomplishments through the years. He also went to Gallaudet in 1941, 1942. He graduated from Gallaudet in 1947. Title, Mervyn D. Garretson, Class of 1941, Painting of Merv, courtesy of Nancy Rourke. Associated logos appear on screen. 1949 to 1962, he was the principal at the Tanis School for the Deaf. From 1963 to 1968, he was a professor at Gallaudet University. In 1969, he was the first principal at the Model Secondary School for the Deaf on the Gallaudet campus. He was a special assistant to four Gallaudet University presidents and was chair for the Deaf Way International Cultural Festival. From 1976 to 1978, he was the 21st president of the National Association of of the deaf. When he retired, our CSDB Alumni Association invited Merv to be the guest speaker in 1999 for our 125th anniversary celebration, where we recognized him for his many outstanding accomplishments throughout his life. As an alumni, we're very proud of the name he's made for himself nationally and internationally. Photograph, Merv and a woman holding hands. Student, titled Jack Lambert, class of 2020. Thelma Smith attended CSDB from 1931 to 1944. She and her sister, also a CSDB student, attended the programs for the blind. Three photographs, Caucasian and African American students in formal class pictures, Thelma shown in the first. As African American children of the 1930s, the sisters were frightened to leave the safety of their home, not knowing how they would be treated. Unlike other schools at the time, discrimination was not allowed at CSDB. Mr. Asa T. Jones, president of the board, frequently took students off campus to the movies and restaurants. Photograph downtown Colorado Springs in the 1950s. Before entering the establishments, he'd ask to speak to the managers and would say, I have students from the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind. We'd like to enter your business, but if we all can't come in, none of us will come in. Thelma earned A's throughout her time at school. Man, title, Philo Grauman, class of 2014. Bambi Marcantonio arrived at Cease to Be in 1936. 61 of these students at that time were blind. When she arrived, her father carried her suitcase into Girls Hall, where she shared a room with five other girls. Her book, Dami La Mano, tells many stories about her life at CSDB. Book cover with photograph of a child's hand resting in adults, titled Dami La Mano, Give Me Your Hand. One of her strongest memories is when she left for home during the summer. Quote, suitcases were brought down from the attic. Mother was later going through my suitcase when she found a pair of mittens and a dish towel I had made in sewing class. Photograph, a group of young girls around a table sewing. She proudly displayed this up for everybody to see my handiwork, end quote. To perform these skills without sight was beyond their comprehension. Their feelings were summed up by an older woman who said, quote, a door closed, another opened. Bambi went on to become a teacher of the visually impaired. Two portraits of Bambi. Photograph, Bambi with five students in front of a banner that reads, congratulations, Miss Mark. She taught first grade and kindergarten for 30 years. 
1983, Bambi was awarded with the Colorado Teacher of the Year Award. Photograph, Nick on a tractor in a farm field. Later in life, she married a well-known farmer named Nick Venetucci, known as the Pumpkin Man, who is memorialized with a statue in Colorado Springs of him handing pumpkins to children. Photograph of Nick's statue. Photograph of a pumpkin patch. For years, Bambi and Nick opened their pumpkin patch to thousands of local children, allowing each to select one of their own. Photograph, Bambi touches the face of Nick's statue. After retirement, Bambi continued to personally invite CSDB students to the farm where she would greet each individually and turn their field trip into a rich learning experience. The buildings at CSDB continued to change. Two photographs, students in front of chicken coops and pens. The land was filled with dairy cows, chickens, horses, dogs, and cats, as well as vegetables from the gardens. After school and on the weekends, students took turns working the land to provide food for the tables. Campus graphic depicting building placement with rotating photographs of each. In 1940, Girls Hall became too unsafe to house students and was replaced with a new dormitory named Brown Hall. And then there was the problem in the school building. Photograph, school building and fire, crowd of onlookers in the foreground, firemen spraying the flames with water. Two pairs of women communicating in sign language. Title, Tamara Kaza, daughter of Melvin Hopton, Stoll and Patricia Ball, classes 1954 and 1955. Many years ago, CSTB had a fire. Do you remember what happened that day? Title, Grace Hopton, Stoll, class of 1955. Well, there was a teacher telling us a story at the time. And we were on the main floor. So we were listening to the story and all of a sudden the alarm went off. Title, Mary Blake, class of 1960. The teacher said, Stay calm, everyone. Let's all walk out of the building. We knew what to do, so we all got in line and slowly we filed out of the building. Once we were out, we saw the fire. So when we got out of the building, there really was smoke barreling out. And Principal Kirkley, principal of the Deaf Department, had four boys go back into the building and my husband was one of them. Title, Mary Jo Maltzby, class of 1960. Two high school students, John and Melvin, at that time, I had heard that they were a huge help to the principal going in to retrieve all of the paintings from the building. They were in a big hurry to get all the paintings out of the building. And they were so heavy, they needed the high school boys to help get them out. So there was three paintings of William Jackson Palmer, Argo, and I think possibly Kennedy. So because of his three children, he founded the School for the Deaf. They went in to the building before the fire took off. It was very smoky, so they came outside. Photograph, a second angle of the school building during the fire. The building was unsafe and could collapse at any time. It was very important that we go in and get those paintings. Palmer was always such a supporter of the deaf school, so it was very important to get them out. We're very thankful to Mr. Kirkland, even though you don't know him, but he was thoughtful enough to save those paintings. They were very important. Lucky the boys were saved. Jenner Palmer donated all that land for the School for the Deaf and Blind years ago. Portrait scrolling across screen. Title, General William Jackson Palmer, Dr. William K. Argo, Jonathan R. Kennedy. Do you remember what caused the fire? So what caused the fire is there were some old electrical wires upstairs and there was a bunch of braille books that were stored there. When the wire came in contact with the book, it caused the fire. There was not much water pressure. There was only a small amount of water coming out. You remember those old fire trucks? Two photographs, the fire being extinguished with numerous onlookers. So as we were waiting there, the firemen kept telling us to move back, move back. As we were standing in there, the fire actually caused the building to collapse. It all came down incredibly fast. Canvas graphic, animated flames on school building, fade to show new building. After the school building fire in 1950, the Gottlieb building was built in its place and opened in 1952. Exterior photograph of Gottlieb building, photo, aerial view of campus, circa 1950. Old script writing scrolling through names and dates. 1954, the superintendent changed to Roy Stelle, who held the position for eight years. Then Armin Turchak became superintendent. Campus graphic depicting building placement and photographs of each. Over the next seven years, he added five more buildings. 1957, the infirmary. 1966, the stone building. 1968, the preschool and the lion's buildings. 
and 1969 the Adams Building. The growth of campus paved the way for CSDB to broaden its scope of services for students throughout the state of Colorado. An aerial view zooms out from the CSDB campus with mountains in the background. Title, CSDB Through the Years, 1921 to 1970. The CSDB logo, Excellence in Service, Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, established 1874. Historical storytellers, Donald Alsbach, class of 1979, Mary Blake, class of 1960, Philo Grauman, class of 2014, Grace Hapdenstahl, class of 1955, Jack Lambert, class of 2020, Mary Jo Maltzby, class of 1962, Tamara Nikaza, daughter of Melvin Hapdenstahl, class of 1954, and Patricia Ball, class of 1955, Jim Olson, narrator. Video production, Olson Belaish, class of 2006, Deb Branch, Sean Levier, Diane Covington, Derek Fisher, drone pilot. ASL consultation, Dana Baldiviez, Relena McDevitt, Captioning, Lori Wilson. Audio description, Jamie Cusimano, Jim Olson. Sign language interpretation, Ryan March, Corey McCormick, Laura Ramos, Hillary Spanley. CSDB Historical Preservation Alumni and Volunteers, Catherine Alsbaugh, Class of 1977, Donald Alsbaugh, Class of 1979, Ralph Ariano, Class of 1978, Kevin Brown, Diane Covington, Tim Elstad, Class of 1978, Kathy Gonzalez, Debbie Habercorn, Sue Pfaffenhauser, Jerry Schofield, Class of 1983, John Veen, Walter Von Felt, Class of 1968, Kim Weglin, Director of Outreach, Laura Douglas, Superintendent, Carol A. Hilty.